Let's go. All right. All right. Welcome to my full in-depth look at Kane and Ross. Now, quickly, disclaimer. One, I'm very well aware that there are plenty of other people who have made videos of Kane, done some builds with him, and some people are probably going to say, shouldn't we just wait for the pros to see what they build? Well, pro play is completely different from normal play, and while, yes, most builds that are used by champions in pro play still work in normal play, you have to play the champion in a completely different way. Like, Jarvan, you're not going to see him build full AD in the LCS most of the time. You're going to be see him you're going to see him built with Cleaver, Titanic Hydra, Garoil, Stoneplate, things like that. What this is aimed for, this is not aimed for gameplay of Khan not not Khan, Kane and Ross. If you're looking for just straight up gameplay of Kane and Ross in a normal game, you have come to the wrong place. There are a lot of popular YouTubers that have done gameplay of them. Check that out if that's what you're looking for. This is purely for information. What I'm aiming to do is to teach people the ins and outs of Kane and Ross to the best of my ability. Because this champion is the first champion I have loved this much since Gangplank's rework. And honestly, I would say that I love Kane and Ross more than Gangplank. But I'm not going to sit here and gush over why I love them so much. I'm here to teach you all. So the first thing that we're going to be going over is just Kane's base form. Also, another thing that I want to make crystal clear, Kane and Rost are two champions in one. Kane is the champion you're looking at right now. Rost is the Darken that is possessing this weapon. But we'll be going over Rost later in this. Right now, we're just going to be talking about Kane in his base form. So, what is Kane exactly? Is he an assassin? Is he a fighter? Is he a bruiser? At his core, Kane is an assassin. Kane specializes in picking off targets, dealing tons of immediate damage, and then getting out of there. That is what Kane specializes in. He also has a lot of AoE damage, so he can clear waves and clear the jungle quickly, and even in the midst of team fights, if people are clumped together, he can actually do a surprising amount of damage to multiple people at the same time. So, Kane in his base form. Let's go over his abilities first. Kane's passive is the Dark in Sight. Kane wields an ancient weapon and fights Ross, the Darken within it, for control. One will win, the other will die. The Darken Ross thrives on fighting melee assassins while hunting vulnerable range enemy strengthens Kane, the Shadow Assassin. What this I means is, you. when Kane you deals damage me. to enemy champions, this target dummy counts, you'll notice some orbs surrounding the champion. When you leave combat, you'll suck in those orbs and you will gain some meter here. When this meter is filled, you can transform into either the Shadow Assassin Kane or the Dark and Rost. Exactly how much damage is necessary to fill up this bar, that is something I unfortunately cannot tell you exactly. Never underestimate All the times I come here to the practice tool, the bar is just filled up in just weirdly different increments. One time it took me like 10,000 damage to fill the bar up. I don't know if it's based off of level or not. That I'm just going to have to continue testing and see. I don't know. So, Kane's Q is Reaping Slash. Kane dashes forward to strike nearby enemies. Now, we're also going to be looking at his base damage when he's level 18, so keep this in mind. Both the dash, and this is very important, by the way, for Reaping Slash, both the dash and the strike deal a base damage of 135 plus 65% of his bonus attack damage. Now, I have 15 attack damage, so, yeah. So, if you want to do the maximum amount of damage to somebody with Reaping Slash, you want to hit them with both the dash and the slash itself. Now, obviously I'm hitting something here with 100 armor, so it's not going to be doing the exact amount of damage, but, you know, it's the practice tool, so take this with a grain of salt. So, at total, the base damage for your Q is going to be 270. Ross, Ra shut up for a second. The base damage of your Q in total is going to be 270 plus 130% of your bonus attack damage, which is going to be your highest scaling ability minus your ultimate. A lot of people say max out your W in lane. That is wrong. Not only does your W have a longer cooldown and it's easier to dodge, but it deals less damage than your Q. We're going to go over his W right now. 
Kane's W is Blade's Reach. Kane deals 260 plus, I believe, 120% of his bonus of attack damage as physical damage and slows enemies by hit by 60% decaying over the next one and a half seconds. Now, this ability has a 9 second cooldown without any cooldown reduction, whereas his Q has a 5 second cooldown. His Q does more damage than his W. I'll show you here. Well, that was actually inaccurate in terms of DPS. Oh no, it wasn't. Okay, so my Q is doing 424 damage for some reason. I don't. Oh no, in total, it does 154. And my W does 148. Now you might think, oh, that's such a small damage difference. Well, we don't have any items. We don't have any items. So once we have items, that difference becomes huge. Not only that, in the time that we can get off one W, we can get off basically two Qs. Not only that, you're always guaranteed to hit your Q if you're standing this close to someone. Whereas your W, they can easily dodge. Kane's E is Shadow Step. Kane gains 40% movement speed and the ability to walk through terrain for one and a half seconds. When he first enters terrain, he is healed for 160 plus, I believe, 40% of his bonus attack damage, and the duration of this effect is extended to nine seconds. Now, Shadow Step is a very unique this ability. At first, I pretty much just compared it to Bard's E, but... It is so much more than that. Bard's E just takes you in one simple direction. Kane's E gives you just absolutely incredible ganking opportunities and uh, mobility because Kane can take escape paths that no other champion can take. Like even Bard can't do this. Here we go. You can get pretty creative with Shadow Step. Now it's important to remember that Kane will lose the movement speed from Shadow Step if he I takes any no sort of nightmare. immobilization. Any form of crowd control that hits Kane while he's in Shadow Step will immediately end it. That includes slows, roots, stuns, anything. And you are not invincible, nor are you invisible when using Shadow Step, so bear that in mind. The main draw of Shadow Step is used to engage onto unsuspecting opponents not to catch up with someone while already in combat. You can use it to catch up with somebody, but you will only get the 40% movement speed for one and a half seconds. Now we will look at Kane's ultimate, Umbral Trespass. It has a passive, which it doesn't say. When you damage someone, you apply Umbral Trespass to them. I actually can't move this out of the way to show you that. But when you damage somebody, you mark them with Umbral Trespass, which you can see by this little icon here. That mark will last for, I believe, as long as you're in combat, which is four or five seconds. About four seconds, about approximately three to four seconds. With Umbral Trespass applied to somebody, you can activate it on that person to infest them. Oh, well, that's a bit of a bug. You can activate Umbral Trespass on them to infest them, becoming untargetable for up to two and a half seconds. You can reactivate to end this effect early. When Umbral Trespass ends, the target will take 350 plus, I believe, um, I believe it was 120%, no, 110% of his bonus attack damage as physical damage. Now, bear in mind, one important thing about this ultimate is that you should not be using it to deal damage. Your ultimate is not primarily a damage source. Yes, it will eventually deal a lot of damage, especially for Kane, but that is not why you were using it. Your ultimate, we will get into why you will use it specifically for each different form. Now, since I already have enough to transform into the Darkened Rost, we're going to go ahead and do that in cover. Plus, I think that's the form that everyone really likes in the first place. An important thing to note, when you transform, you are stuck in that form. You cannot transform back in the rest of the game. So make sure that you that you want that transformation. Now, why would you want either or? That we will go over now. We're going to be going over Rost. This is Rost, the darkened form. This is not Kane. Kane is now dead. This is Rost. Now, as Rost, your abilities change quite a bit. I know it may seem like, oh, well, all of my abilities still the same thing, just a couple of different tidbits. There are quite a couple of differences that you will not notice at first glance, especially if you do not read the read between the lines for his abilities. 
Now, the most important thing about Rost is his passive. Rost's passive is still the Dark Inside, but what it does now is that since you're transformed, you will heal for 43% of all spell damage dealt to champions. Think of it as spell damage. Basically. Yes, it, it basically is spell damage. So now, 43% of all damage that you deal to champions through your abilities will heal you. So with this, Ross can sustain himself incredibly well, especially against tanks, and this is why. Reaping Slash has now been modified. It still does the same thing. It's still a dash. However, the damage is completely different. Before, my, da my dash was doing about 154 damage. Now it's doing 661. Why is that? Ross dashes forward to strike me by enemies. The dash and strike now deal 50% of your bonus attack damage. The base damage is gone. Now it only has... 50% of your bonus attack damage, which is the 61 right there, plus 5.6% of the target's maximum health, plus an extra 4% for every 100 bonus AD. What does this mean? Ross does lose base damage and damage overall on Reaping Slash. However, he gains percent maximum health damage. This is important because it allows him to kill tanks much faster than Kane ever could. I That's why my Q is doing this much damage, although the target dummy has 10,000 health, so take this with a grain of salt. But your Q is going to be doing a lot more damage to tanks. Now, because of this, your Q will not be dealing as much damage to squishy opponents as Kane would do. That doesn't mean it won't do any damage, but you will be doing less damage to squishier opponents. Let me make that clear. Rost is specifically designed to take on melee champions, fighters, bruisers, and tanks. And his Q emphasizes that. Remember, the base damage on Reaping Slash has been removed. It now only scales off of 50% of your bonus AD and deals a percentage of the target's maximum health. One other thing I forgot to mention about Reaping Slash, no matter what form you are in, Kane or Rost, it will deal 55 bonus physical damage to monsters. It was 70, but the patch today change that to 55. Next is Blade's Reach. Blade's Reach still does the exact same damage as it did before. The damage is still the exact same. A base of 260 plus 120% of your bonus attack damage. And it still has the slow. What Ross gains is a knockup on enemies for one second. This is extremely good as it offers Ross an excellent form of crowd control. He can knock up multiple people in a line and it is only on a 9 second cooldown without any cooldown reduction, but as Ross, you are typically going to be building items that give you cooldown reduction, which we'll be going over later. So you have very potent crowd control as Ross. You can knock someone up and get an easy reaping slash onto them and deal quite a bit of damage. Shadow Step gains no bonuses for Ross. Shadow Step is the exact same as it was in your base form, so there's nothing that I can tell you about here. Now, Umbral Trespass is very important to go over because... It still does the same thing, but the damage is extremely different. Now, it does not have a base damage at all. Umbral Trespass will only do a flat percentage of the target's maximum health and heal Rost for a percentage of his target's maximum health. Not his maximum health, a percentage of his target's maximum health. Keep this in mind. Umbral Trespass will not do much damage to squishier opponents at all, because now it only deals the percentage of the target's maximum health. So how do you want to use Rost's ultimate? What you want to use Rost's ultimate for is, one, repositioning, since you can infest the target, you can also wait for your cooldowns to resurface, you can use it to heavily damage a tank, and you can also use it to heal yourself in the midst of a fight. Let's say you fall to half health, and their tank is still alive, you can use your ultimate on their tank, or some sort of bruiser that has a lot of health, and heal for an incredible amount of damage, because not only are you healing for a percentage of the target's maximum health, you are healing for 43% of the damage that you dealt with Umbro Trespass. So Ross can heal incredible amounts. I've seen Ross heal practically their entire health bar from using Umbro Trespass on some tanks like Scion and Zac, Shogath. It, it's incredible. Now, let's go over builds for Ross. Ross 
is technically superior to Kane in terms of flexibility. The reason for this is because that his base damages have been removed and he isn't completely reliant on them, he just depends on the damage from the target's maximum health, he can go a variety of different builds. He can build full damage, he can build full sustain, he can build very tanky. So we're going to go over some builds. Now, these builds are what I consider the optimal and normal builds for Rost. More power to you, you can go many different builds on him. You can build full lethality even if you want. But in terms of what is going to have the most success and be a good standard build all around, that is what we were going to be looking at. Now, the most important thing for Rost is the Black Cleaver. It is just a giant walking stat stick. It gives him 400 health. He loves the health, helps him survive. He loves the attack damage, 40 attack damage. 20% cooldown reduction is invaluable because Ross depends on his cooldowns a lot. The Cleaver's Armor Shred is very good for helping you get through tanks, as is the movement speed. Cleaver is absolutely core. It doesn't matter what you are building on Ross, I believe that you should always have a Black Cleaver. The stats that it gives you are just too good to pass up, as well as how cheap it is, only 3,000 gold, is, is, is absolutely phenomenal. That is your core. You should always have Black Cleaver. Always. Whether or not you should always get it first, that is entirely debatable. Sometimes there are other items that you can rush, but at some point, by your second item, I believe you should have the Black Cleaver. The stats that it gives are just too crucial for Kane. Not Kane, Rost. Well, K Kane also uses the Black Cleaver, but we're not going over Kane right now, we're going over Rost. Now, for boots, you can pretty much grab any boot here, bar Mobies and Berserkers, Greaves, and Sword Shoes. Um, you can grab CDR boots if you want, though, depending on the build, you won't really need them. You can grab Swifties. Most of the time, you'll be grabbing Mercury Treads or Ninja Tabby, depending on which uh, what the team comp is. Uh, but, you know, Ninja Tabby is pretty good, so most of the time you'll probably be going Ninja Tabby, unless you're facing a ton of crowd control, in which case Mercury Treads is obviously better. Now then, after Cleaver, we're going to be going over the standard build for Rost, a build that will work no matter what situation you're in. After Cleaver, you have one of two options. You can either go the Titanic Hydra, which is your standard bruiser core, Cleaver and Titanic Hydra. Titanic Hydra gives you 450 health, 35 attack damage. The base health regen is nice, but it doesn't really matter, and obviously the Titanic Hydra is passive. It gives you so much damage, it gives you more sustain because you're dealing more damage. Um, it gives you even more AoE damage in team fights. As I said, the health is very nice for surviving in team fights. It's just all around a great item, and it pairs very well with Cleaver because they're they're pretty much a good core for boosters. Or another option that I found recently is the Edge of Night, especially more so now that it got buffed. The reason for this is because it gives 300 health now, which is a very nice amount of health, especially considering this item gives lethality. 55 tack. 55 attack damage and the spell shield for me. Now, Edge of Night is only a little bit cheaper than the Titan. Well, actually, 600 gold is quite a bit cheaper. Uh, and it only gives 150 less health, it gives you more damage. So if you're looking for a bit more damage than the Titanic Hydra up front, as well as a bit of lethality, the Edge of Night is an option. R getting it second probably isn't the best idea, but it is an option especially if you're ahead. Though for the most part, I highly just suggest grabbing the Titanic Hydra. After the, after the Cleaver and the Titanic Hydra, if you are ahead, I suggest grabbing Death Stance. Death Stance literally is Rost in a nutshell. It gives you 80 attack damage, which is an absolutely insane amount of damage. It gives you more cooldown reduction, and the passive that heals you for your physical attacks and spells as well as the reduced damage on this bleed is tremendous. It helps It helps Ross survive, it helps Ross do more damage, it helps him sustain more, it's just absolutely phenomenal. So these three items I believe to be your standard core for Ross in a normal situation. Now, you can skip out on Death Stance for now and instead grab either a Spirit Visage, a Death Man's Plate, or a Gargoyle Stone Plate if you want, but if you're playing Kane slash Rost, you're going to be playing him aggressively because he's a very snowball oriented champion. So I would highly suggest going for the death stance. After that, 
you can pretty much grab any one of these four items here. Goggle, Stone Plate, Guardian Angel, Dead Man's Plate, and Spear Visage, all depending on what you want. Personally, I would say the best combination would be Guardian Angel and Spirit Visage, because this gives you a good mix of resistances. You have the increased healing from Spirit Visage on top of Death Stance and your passive, which just gives you so much healing. You have a decent amount of armor between Guardian Angel and Ninja Tabby. Guardian Angel also giving you more okay. damage, as well as the Revive passive. Yes, I was a bad influence after all. If you want a bit more armor, you can swap out the Spirit Visage and sacrifice the healing on that for Dead Man's Plate. You could even switch out Guardian Angel for a Gargoyle Stone Plate if you just want absolutely massive amounts of defense and you don't have to worry about the drop in damage because you're basically unkillable at that point if you do pick up the gargoyle stone plate but for the most part i'd say the standard build is probably going to be dead man's and spirit visage or spirit visage and guardian angel just because they provide a good mix of the things that rost likes now those are standard builds there are other builds that you can go now, as I said before, cleaver is core. You should always have a black cleaver when you are using Ross. No ifs, ands, or buts. Always have a black cleaver. I just want to make sure that is perfectly clear. Another option that you can go is the Dusk Blade and the Edge of Night. Now, originally I dismissed this because I assumed Let's that much damage examples. without any defensive stats I did not think would work very well for Ross. I thought it would be better for Kane. But with the Edge of Night changes that started coming in, that became different, because Edge of Night now gives you 300 health. Not only that, but the Dusk Blade, this passive got changed again. It has 60 attack damage, which is very nice. It has a 99% slow for 0.25 seconds, which is basically a root at that point, and 210 physical damage, or bonus physical damage when you are level 18. It is such a tremendous damage spike. Now, this is a lot more damage orientated, so if you're looking to just carry super hard and you don't really care about, you know, your standard bruise build, Titanic Hydra and such, this build is very good. You will deal an insane amount of damage. You won't be as durable as you were before, but you will deal insane amounts of damage. And the best way to carry is typically through damage. Now, from here, I would say the best combination of items is Dead Man's Plate and Guardian Angel. If you're fighting somebody with a lot of magic resist, you could swap out the Guardian Angel for Spirit Visage, but honestly, you do so much damage and you heal so much that I think this build is superior. A cane that I played with recently built this, I looked at it a lot closely, this build is very good in terms of carrying. I think that this build offers the most carry potential for Rost. The other standard build is good for, you know, just being standard, uh, being able to survive in team fights in terms of carrying potential and doing just insane amounts of damage and having good split push potential. I believe this is the best one for Rost because you have a lot of health between the Black Cleaver, Dead Man's Plate, and Edge of Night. You have good armor between the Guardian Angel, Dead Man's Plate, and Ninja Tabby. If you need more magic resistance, you can definitely swap out uh, Ninja Tabby for Mercury Threats, which gives you a little bit of resistance. You also have the Spell Shield from Edge of Night and Guardian Angel's Passive, which makes you incredibly resilient. It, it's unbelievable how resilient you are. You, you survive so well. And look at this. You still deal insane damage to tanks. This thing has a 10,000 health, and look at the damage that I'm able to put out on it. Rost, Rost can do so much damage to tanks, it's unbelievable. He is an absolute tank shredder. Now, another build that you can go is just flat, full lethality. Just absolutely destroy someone. You can grab Ghostblade, you can grab yourself Mortal Reminder, and you will... What, what this build benefits is that you will still do a ton of damage to tanks, but Squishies will not even be able to survive. You will, it's, it's insane. It is absolutely nuts. Now, the thing about this build is that this build really only works if you're ahead. If you are fallen behind, it's not going to work as well because you won't have the survivability that you need early on from the Black Cleaver and Edge of Night. Another important thing is that even though this build deals a lot of damage, Kane will deal more damage than Ross with this build. That's not to say that you can't build this. You can definitely still build this. But if you were going to build this, you would have been much better off going Kane. The only thing that this build offers you as Rost is the sustain from your passive. 
That is all you get, because your Q and your ultimate won't deal as much damage to squishies. Granted, 46% of their maximum health is still a lot, and lethality will increase that by tremendous amounts. By the way, the runes I'm running are just your standard bruiser runes, just attack damage marks and quints, armor, seals, magic resistance per level glyph. So if you were wondering about that, that's what I'm running. The mastery that I'm running is also Storm Raider Surge. I'll get to that after I go over Kane as well, because I'll be going over what synergies uh, you have in terms of builds between both of them. Aside from the fully Lethality build, the last standard build I could say that you would be seeing a lot on Kane is just a Lifesteal build. After Cleaver, you will pick up Death Stance, you can pick up a Ravenous Hydra, you can pick up a Bloodthirster, and though I don't like it on Rost, or Kane, the Blade of the Ruin King, mainly because it synergizes with the lifesteal so much. With this build, you won't deal as much damage as the other builds. You, you do have a lot of attack damage. You do have a lot of attack damage. So you will be dealing a lot of damage. But the other builds are more consistent because you aren't as durable. The reason I say you won't deal as much damage is because you won't survive as long. Rost wants to survive a fight as long as possible. That is where his damage comes from consistently being able to attack his opponents. Now, this build does give you the lifesteal to just sustain through a lot, but you can, you are very susceptible to burst damage with this build. So only really build this if you're against people that have a lot of sustained damage and a lot of DPS. This build does not work very well against high burst champions, so like Syndra, um, well, actually a lot of mages. Um, pretty much anyone that can just burst you down, because then the lifesteal won't be able to take into effect. And that is pretty much all of the builds that are really standard for Kane. They're not Kane, Rost, my mistake. Now, we're going to reset, and we are going to go over Kane. Now, in case you're still a bit confused, let me just make this clear. Kane and Rost are different champions. They play differently as well. The one that you just saw was Rost. Rost is the Darken that will consume Kane. Kane is, well, the, the, the human himself that you're looking at right now. So, first thing that we need to do is get ourselves in combat. And, oops, I need to disable Turret's minions. The blood of the fallen will anoint me the new master. Everyone get ourselves in combat and charge with our meter. Now, you might be wondering, wait, but these target dummies are only melee, so how, how am I going to get my transformation for Kane? You are not locked out of a transformation just because of the type of champion that you are attacking. As you can see, I'm getting the red essence for, for Rost's form here. Tell me, was it desperation what you see here is a timer. When you hover over, it says you are not yet strong enough to become the Shadow Assassin. Wait for the cooldown, then transform on your summoning platform. If you wait for four minutes after filling up your bar, you can transform into the other form. So you are not locked out of one just because of the type of uh, the type of champion that you have been dealing damage to. So keep that in mind. You can choose. Just remember that once you have made your decision to transform, you cannot turn back. So we've already gone over Rost's uh, advantages. I'll go over his disadvantages after I can compare Kane to him. So we'll just fast forward one more time, and we will be ready to make our transformation into Kane, the Shadow Assassin. The child is gone. The killer remains. Now, let's go over Kane's abilities, because his are vastly different from Ross's. First off, his passive, and this is the most important thing that you need to take away from this part of the guide. Kane's passive. Because that is what will define how Kane is played. Kane's passive is for the first three seconds in champion combat, you will deal 44% of all damage dealt to champions as bonus magic damage. Before you ask, yes, mind. that includes Build Ignite. If I walk Free up to this mind. target dummy, hit him, and then ignite him, you will see that... Well, actually, it doesn't show up here for some reason. But a percentage of that mat, a percentage of Ignite's damage is also dealt as bonus magic damage. A percentage of all damage dealt, any damage that you deal as Kane, for those first three seconds in champion combat, 44% of that is dealt as bonus magic damage. What this means is for the first three seconds in combat, you deal 44% bonus damage as magic damage. 
so you basically have a 44% bonus damage steroid for the first few seconds in combat, which is huge. It is absolutely huge. Now, I know it doesn't look like I did, didn't do much damage to this target dummy, but that's because it has 100 armor and 10,000 health. Once I have the items for his build, you'll definitely see the damage come in. Let's go over his abilities. Now, Reaping Slash for Kane does not get any changes. It's still With the exact blade, same. I am Just dashes invincible. through his targets and does damage. He gets no bonuses for that. <laughs> his W. This is where things come in. First off, Kane creates a living shadow which casts Blades Reach for the him. Of meaning, I can click here to move will. and use my W while moving. It will not inhibit my movement. This is very crucial to Kane's playing style, because this means that he can execute this combo, Q and W, instantly. Not only does this immediately proc Thunderlords, but it does an insane amount of burst damage, especially to Squishies. That combo alone, mid to late game, can kill a Squishy person, just immediately. Oh, I need to give myself more gold for once I buy the items. Another important thing about Blades Reach is that one, the slow now decays over two seconds instead of one of a half, one and a half seconds, so the slow lasts longer. And what it doesn't tell you is that Blades Reach gets 10% bonus attack damage added to his scaling for Kane. So your W will deal more damage as Kane. Now, even though it does get that 10% bonus damage, that does not mean you should max out Blade's Reach first. You should still be maxing out Reaping Slash. It is more consistent damage. You are guaranteed to hit it if you are standing next to someone. Not only that, the mana cost is lower because Blade's Reach's mana cost goes up by 10, I believe, no, 5. 5 with every rank. Now, Shadow Step is another important part of Kane because this changes. The movement speed is increased to 70% while Kane is in terrain. My Not only that, the he gains of the slow unwilling. immunity. He cannot be slowed while he is in terrain using Shadow Step. Remember, this is only while he is in terrain. Now, this also means a slow will not immobilize Kane while using Shadow Step if he is in terrain. So you cannot be slowed or immobilized in Shadow Step by slows as Kane. The last important part for Kane is Umbral Trespass. Umbral Trespass still does the exact same damage, however, what it does is, one, this it has longer range, so you can be. activate it from longer away. <laughs> Not only that, it will refresh the Darkened Scythe. That is very crucial, because this basically gives you six seconds of 44% bonus magic damage in combat with enemy champions. Now, my what are Kane's advantages compared to Ross? As you can clearly rest. see, he has no sustain anywhere in his kit. He has no sustain, he has no percent health damage, so he's not very effective at killing tanks. But, what Kane lacks in the sustain damage and the ability to kill tanks, he makes up for with incredible burst damage as well as mobility. Because he doesn't have to stand still while using his W, he can execute the Reaping Slash Blade's Reach combo, which Rost cannot do. Kane can deal an incredibly high amount of burst damage in such a short amount of time. Rost cannot do that. And not only that, it is absolutely My incredible for procking. Um, it is incredibly. Uh, inc it is incredible for procking Thunderlord's Decree as well as Storm Raider Surge. Now, Storm Raider Surge unfortunately is not going to proc against something this durable because I can't do 30% of this thing's health in two and a half seconds. So. Now we're going to go over builds for Kane. Kane is not as flexible in terms of build paths as Rost is, because Kane's job is to deal as much damage as humanly possible as quickly as possible. So you basically need to min-max and optimize for damage. Now, what are your core items for Kane? There are three core items I believe that you should always have on Kane. The Ghost Blade, I buy the Dust Blade, die. and the Black Simple. Cleaver. Now you're probably thinking, but why not the Black Cleaver just alone as a core item? Why why does that have to be paired along with the Ghost Blade and the Dust Blade? Because Kane needs all three of these items together to get their full impact. Let me show you. The Ghost Blade alone is definitely a core item for Kane, and I believe the first item that you should rush. 
it gives you good attack damage, it gives you cooldown reduction, it gives you lethality, and it gives you incredible movement speed out of combat, which allows you to engage on unsuspecting enemies from very far away. Combining that with Shadow Step, you are a ganking nightmare. Next is the Dusk Blade. Dusk Blade is an alternative oh, rush yes. to Ghost Blade. You this can build the, the Dusk Blade choice. first, though I believe that Dusk not Dusk Blade, the Ghost Blade gives more consistency. What does the Dusk Blade give that the Ghost Blade does not? It gives the bonus physical damage and the very short slow. That Every allows you to burst down a target much more Every quickly. However, target. Ghost Blade gives you the advantage of being able to not only stick to your target with this movement speed, but to get out as well as engage. So Dusk Blade gives you more damage, whereas the Ghost Blade gives you the consistency and sticking power that you need, which I believe is more important than the straight damage of Dusk Blade at the start. You will eventually have both. After those two I uh, excuse me. After those two items, I believe you should get the cleaver. You can get the cleaver second, but I believe you should get the dust blade second as it gives you a huge damage spike. If you need if you just need the raw stats and survivability from the black cleaver, then you can grab it second. But I believe you should build the cleaver third. Because at that point some people may have armor that the cleaver will help you shred through. Cleaver is good for Kane, the exact same reason that it's good on Rost. It's just a giant stat stick. He likes the health, it gives him a little bit of survivability, he likes the attack damage, he likes the cooldown reduction, he likes everything that it gets. Not only that, these three items together give you the 40% CDR cap that you are looking for. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. As for boots, mobility boots are an option, but I believe Swifties are superior as they help you while you are in combat. That is the most important part about Kane while he is in combat. Now, these three items are your core. I believe you should always have them when you are playing Kane. There are some situations where you could possibly swap out one of the items, and that one item is Duskblade. But for the most part, I believe you should always have these three items. That is Kane's core. It gives him the CDR cap that he needs, it gives him damage, survivability, and movement speed. Now, your next two items are always going to be situational. This is the small amount of flexibility that Kane has. Rost has so much more because he can swap out many different items, whereas he only really just needs the cleaver. Kane basically needs these three core items. What other items can you get for Kane? Edge of Night is always an option. The health that it gives is very nice for survivability, the lethality also goes a long way, and Knight's Veil is a beautiful act that allows you to take a lot of things that mages can throw at you. If you're fighting a ton of magic damage, the Maw of Malmordius is a good pickup. I also forgot to mention that Maw of Malmordius is a good pickup on Rost. Um, you, can, you can definitely rush Hex Drinker or just even the straight up Maw if you're fighting uh, an AP top laner or mid laner. So Maw is an option for Rost, just putting that out there, it's just that Unless they're not, there's not a lot of magic damage, you might as well just pick up other items. Um, Maw does give cooldown reduction, though, so if you were going to pick up the Maw, I would say swap out the Dusk Blade for it, as you'll go over the CDR cap, and that's at that point, that's just a waste of gold. Um, another item that's very good for Kane is Death Stance, because Kane does not have any sustain at all, and Death Stance solves this problem tremendously, especially considering that he gets the bonus... Um, uh, the bonus healing. Now, unfortunately, this is not applied to his passive, because Death Stance only applies to the damage from physical spells and attacks. So keep that in mind. You can get Death Stance, but it will not heal you for the damage from your passive, because this is dealt as magic damage. Another item that's good for Kane and possibly better in terms of sustaining the Death Stance, is Ravenous Hydra, because the cooldown on Death Stance does go to waste. Ravenous Hydra gives you another damage source for your combo which we'll be going over his full combo in a bit. In terms of consistency, the items that you will be going for, I believe the two items that you will pick up after your core are one of the um, Last Whispers, either Mortal Reminder or Lord Dominus Regards. It all depends on what you're fighting. Though, since you're typically going to be fighting Squishies, you're usually going to be picking up Mortal Reminder and Guardian Angel. This gives you the survivability that you need, you still have a lot of attack damage, and you are able to burst down squishies tremendously quickly. Now then, this is pretty much Kane's core build. You can't really deviate too far from this. Before I go into Kane's combo, I'm going to go over items that you should not 
build on Kane. Not Rost, because Rost is very flexible and he can build a myriad of items. But Kane, there are certain items that you should not build on him. The, the first one and the most important one is the Trinity Force. Why would you not build the Trinity Force? First off, the Trinity Force is extremely expensive. It's more expensive than any of other any other item that you will be building on Kane. Plus, it's the most expensive item in the game. Actually, no, I believe the most expensive item in the game is Death Cap. My mistake. So it's the second most expensive item in the game. But what does the Trinity Force give you? Gives you 250 health and mana, 25 attack damage, 40% attack speed, 20% cooldown reduction, and 5% movement speed. We need to go over what is a waste here. The Phage Passive isn't a waste. The Phage Passive is very good. However, you would get the Phage Passive with the Black Cleaver, which is one of Kane's core items. It gives much better stats for Kane than the Trinity Force does. It gives him more health, it gives him more attack damage, and the Cleaver's Passive is much better because the Black Cleaver's Passive procs on any physical damage dealt. Trinity Force's Passive is only procced off of basic attacks. Keep that in mind. Trinity Force only gives you the movement speed from the Phage Passive from basic attacks. Kane is not a basic attacking champion. He is reliant on his abilities. You will be weaving in auto attacks, but you are primarily based off of your abilities. And since you deal physical damage with your abilities, that is why the Black Cleaver is superior. Plus, it's so much cheaper, so you can reach that power spike much faster. The cooldown reduction is nice, but the Cleaver gives you that. The attack damage is lower than the cleaver. 25 measly attack damage is simply not enough to make the most of Kane's high ratios. You want to squeeze out as much damage as possible as Kane. The attack speed goes to complete waste. You are not going to be sitting there auto-attacking your opponent to death as Kane. You are going to be using your ability combo, weaving in maybe one or two autos, using your ultimate to reset your passive, repeating the combo, and getting out of there. Kane does not have any sustained damage in his kit because once his passive falls off, after the three seconds of combat, which you can see here, he has nothing to augment his damage. At this point, Ross is doing more damage than Kane because he's still in combat and Ross has percent health damage, which will eventually triumph over Kane's. Kane is not meant to sit in the thick of a fight and continually deal damage. He is meant to flank the enemy, Light get into the back line, which he can do easily with his mobility from Blade's Reach, as well as Reaping Slash. Not only that, the bonus movements that he gets from Shadow Step, he is meant to deal his damage, infest his target, repeat his combo if they are not dead, and escape. He is not meant to sit there at a slugfest. Kane will not succeed in that. So Trinity Force is a waste. The attack speed goes to waste, it doesn't give you enough attack damage. Cleaver is just a much better stat stick. Not only that, Trinity Force is far too expensive. Another item you should not build on Kane is the Bloodthirster. As nice as that lifesteal is, you only get the overheal from your basic attacks, which you're not going to be using much, and Death Stance is far more cost efficient as it gives you the attack damage, it gives you the heal on any physical damage dealt, not just basic attacks, and it gives you the reduced damage in the form of the bleed, so it is much more efficient than that. Other items that you should not be building on Kane are basically any critical strike items. The reason for this is, again, I can't emphasize this enough, Kane is not dependent on his basic attacks. You are not meant to sit there and deal consistent damage. That is what critical strike items are for. Static Shiv, Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge, they, they just will not succeed as well as the other core items as Kane. You may think that Death Stance and Phantom Dancer is a good combination, which those two items are, but they are wasted on Kane because Kane, he does not make use of the attack speed or the crit critical chance, critical strike chance. He's not meant to just sit there and slug it out with someone. Not only that, it gives him no attack damage whatsoever. This item does not give Kane any beneficial stats. Even the movement speed. You will get more movement speed out of building the Ghost Blade or... Well, actually, the Dust Blade doesn't have the movement speed out of combat, but you would get more out of the Ghost Blade, you would get more out of the Cleaver's um, movement speed. So this item is a waste. Every item that you see here is a waste. I'm not saying you can't build it for fun. Go ahead and do it. But in terms of consistent maxing out your damage and what is going to be one of the best, do not build anything in the Critical Strike Tree for Kane. Do not. You can build it on Ross, 
I could actually see that being effective since he's going to be sitting there and slugging out with you. I could see Death Dance and Phantom Dance possibly working, like some sort of cheese or something. But for Kane, do not build anything in the Critical Strike Tree. Another item that you may think is good, but in reality it is not, the Blade of the Ruined King. Again, the Blade of the Ruined King is dependent on you sitting there and slugging it out with your opponent. Kane does not succeed in that aspect. This item could work well on Rost, even, despite the slight... Well, actually, no, it gives the same attack damage as Cleaver, so there's that. It is a bit pricey. I mean, it's almost as expensive as Death Sands and Titanic. But the main draw of this item is its attack speed is active, which is only 100 match damage, and the 8% of the target's current health. Kane doesn't want that. Kane does not want that. Now, the only time I would suggest you building this is if... There is a squishy on the enemy team combined with tanks that you need to be the able to kill. That is the only progress. reason I would say building the Blade of the Ruined King is if there is maybe one or two squishies and then they have two other really big frontliners. But for the most part, avoid the Blade of the Ruined King. It is a waste of gold. The attack speed goes to waste. The passive goes to waste because, yes, a percentage of this damage is Delta's bonus match damage for your passive, but 8% of a squishy's current health is non-existent. You're better off building this item on Rost. So do not build Blade of the Ruined King on Kane. Other items that you should avoid. Frozen Mallet doesn't give the stats that Kane likes. You could possibly build it on Ross. Don't build it on Kane. You're looking to maximize your damage, so avoid this item. As far as other damage items go, that's pretty much it, because that's all the items that give you the attack damage. Mercurial Scimitar is also an option if you need the QSS. I could see you picking that up in case you're fighting a Malzahar or something. Also, this goes without saying, but Kane doesn't Kane doesn't have a single ability power ratio anywhere in his build, uh, in his abilities. So don't bother getting Gunblade or a uh, Gunblade or Rage Blade or any crap like that. Okay. So, we've gone over the item builds for Kane and Rost, or rather the item build for Kane. This is pretty much what you're going to be building most of the time. You can swap one of these items out for um, a Mob Malmortius or a, a Mercurial Scimitar if necessary. Um, maybe even a, de a Death Stance or Ravenous Hydra or something. But for the most part, this is consistently what you're going to see. So, With this blade, I am invincible. what are the differences between Kane and Ross that would make them usable in certain situations? TLDR? Kane excels at killing squishy targets. The reason for this is because he retains his high base damage on all his abilities, as well as getting bonus damage on Blade's Reach, whereas Ross does not. He also has his passive, which allows him to basically deal 44% bonus damage to a target for the first three seconds. Now walks in Your combo as Kane is basically going to be... Oh, that was a bit of lag. Your combo as Kane is going to be W and Q, keep auto-attacking until the Darkened Scythe is gone, which is basically three auto-attacks, use your ultimate, repeat that combo, and then leave. Your, your target will be dead at that point because your target should be a squishy. Let me just do that again uh, with the full combo. I also need to make sure I use Ignite and Ghost Blade. Kill what you'll normally body, be doing is, body, for, flank, for the flanking body. the enemy, you'll be popping your Ghost Blade and using Shadow Step to get in. You'll ignite them, use your W and Q, auto-attack them three times, or two as many as you can to get off the past of Dark Inside. Wait the full duration to make sure your W pull them back up, auto-attack them a couple more times, and then leave. You can see, even against something with 10,000 health and 100 armor, over the course of that combination of abilities and basic attacks, I did quite a bit of damage. But, after that, I can't do anything. Kill them Without your ultimate, this is just your combo. W and Q, auto attack a couple times, and then leave. You are close to the maximum total practice tool game again. Oh, I didn't even notice there was a maximum length. Well, I'm basically about to be finished anyway, so. Is as it was Without your ultimate, be. that is going to be your combo. W and Q, auto attack three times, and then get out of there. You are not meant to just sit there and slug it out. You are not. The only time you would sit there and slug it out is if you can chase your opponent and you know you can kill them. But at that point, your opponent should be dead. So there's that. So Kane excels at killing squishy opponents. As you saw before, Rost excels at sitting in the middle of a fight, sustaining through tons of damage, and dealing consistent percent maximum health damage to tanks and even squishies alike, but specifically tanks. What are you going to want to do as Kane? No, my mistake. What are you going to want to do as Rost? As Rost, your priority should not be squishy targets most of the time. The reason for this is because, yes, you can kill them, but you will not kill them as fast 
as Kane would, your priority is going to usually be on the front line, because you can survive most any damage, but you can get kited very easily as Kane because you do not have the same ability that, uh, no, as Rost, you can be kited very easily because you do not have Kane's mobility. The blade of you are not able to move while using Blade's Reach. Will. You do not have the same length of Unmoved Trespass that Kane has. You do not have as much movement speed with Shadow Step. So in big team fights, your best bet as Rost, unless it's possible to immediately get onto the squishy carry and delete them, sit and duel the frontliners because you will melt through them with your percent health damage and you will sustain so much because you're doing so much damage based off of their maximum health. And that is an in-depth, comprehensive look at Kane and Ross. Now bear in mind, everything that I said over these past 25 to 30 minutes are tempted to change it because Kane is still in the PvE. He may very well be changed once he hits live. If any big changes come out, I will definitely make some updates of this. Hopefully you were able to take something away from this, and thank you so much for watching anyone that did. I really like Kane and Ross. I really, really like them. They are, without a doubt, my favorite champion now, more so than Gangplank. I love their playstyles. I love their flexibility. It's... I love their design. They're just a, they're just really cool champions. So hopefully you were able to take something away from this. Remember, the most important thing to remember from this, Kane excels at killing squishier targets. Rost excels at killing tanks. Remember that. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.